a police officer came out from behind a bush. What? To a issue bush? them a fine. Oh my god, that's yeah. so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what? Really? A bush? <laughs> hey guys, my name is Davey and I grew up in Singapore for 12 years before I moved out to the States. Hi, I'm Kenneth Koo. Uh, I grew up in Singapore and I finished my army and then I moved to the States for university. Tip number one, asking for the price after you bought your food. So usually sometimes when you sit down at a, a seafood place, the food there will be listed as market price, especially something like lobster or crab. Anything that is like seasonal, you always want to make sure you check the price. There was an incident where some tourists were way overcharged. They were charged about $500 for their meal, which was for about four or five people, when that was not the expectation. I don't know how I can afford that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tip number two, buying your alcohol and cigarettes outside of the airport. There's a huge sin tax in Singapore. Singapore. Okay. But like every single time like I visit like home in Singapore, like my friend will like call me up and be like, Hey, are you at the airport? So like once you get in like Singapore, could you buy me like three bottles of like vodka or something like that? Every family in Singapore has a like little treasure trove where they put all the alcohol that they buy duty free from the airport. You don't want to pay that tax. I'm so worried that when foreign friends visit, they're gonna think we're all alcoholics. Alcoholics. But well, we're we... just trying to save money. <laughs> Tip number three is leaving the airport too early. There's a lot to do in Singapore Changi Airport. Uh, they just built a giant mall called Jewel. It has like the largest like indoor waterfall in the shopping mall. The thing mall. Is, is insane. Yeah, it's insane. It looks like Jurassic Park when you walk in because it's full of green and there's this huge waterfall just cascading water down. It's pretty normal for people to be like, let's hang out at the airport. It has a cinema, it has a swimming pool at the airport, it has all the facilities that you desire. It's crazy, it's insane. And I was there recently, it was so beautiful. Do you want to go to the airport today? Yeah. yeah. Number four, a chewing gum. No chewing gum. One of the most no, no, famous no, no. <laughs> famous rules, internationally known. Technically, it's not illegal to chew gum in Singapore. It's just the buying and selling. I do have one story when my friend and I, we were coming from Malaysia and we have like, you know, I would say like, we have a couple of like chewing gums and stuff. Like, well, she has. And literally at an immigration point, the officer has to confiscate her chewing gum, even if it was for like personal consumption. If you ever bring chewing gum, like just don't bring it, they will confiscate it and it's pretty much illegal if you chew it and like you litter, you will get fined. Ooh. Yeah, don't litter. Right? I think that uh, a lot of people recognize that it's for the greater good. Right, yeah. So to be able to enjoy uh, a city that's so clean all the time, people have to follow uh, rules like that. Tip number five, avoiding tap water. What do you think about like tap water in Singapore? Can I think it's fine. Just drink it straight. Yeah. I know in the region, sometimes especially when you're traveling to different sort of places that you're not familiar with, you want to be cautious and you want to purchase sort of like the bottled water just to be safe. But in Singapore, everything is very strict and well regulated. So mm -hmm. especially our water system. So feel free to just drink the water straight from your tap. When you go to a restaurant, make sure you bring your own like reusable water bottle because they will charge you even if it's like tap water. Uh, next tip, eating in public transportation. So that's a big no-no in Singapore. There is no like eating and drinking in any like public transportations in Singapore. That's why Singapore is so clean and everyone is just like, okay, there's no eating. I feel like, I feel like if you're like a little thirsty or something and you just want to take a sip of water, that's fine. But if you like bring a glass of, I don't know, beer to the train, you know, or to the bus, you can't do that. You cannot do that. <laughs> At all. So number seven, not learning some Singlish phrases. Singlish is such like another language. Like I feel like Singapore is such like a multicultural with like different people, with like different background, different languages that we have like all this like mesh moosh like languages that we have is like what we call it as Singlish. Mm -hmm. So there's four different official languages in Singapore. Uh, Malay, Tamil, Mandarin Chinese and English. Yes. So not many people know that most everybody in Singapore speaks English 
Uh, it's just the lingua franca or like a bridge language so that everybody from different cultures can still communicate effectively with everybody else. So a good uh, everyday sort of example of Singlish in action is when you order coffee or tea at your local hawker, hawker centre. Center. There's always like a drink stall in the hawker centre and it's always run by the owner because the owner knows that every single person who eats there needs to buy a drink as well. So there's a lot of guides that you can check online on how to order your coffee, coffee. or your tea at a hawker centre like a local. For example, if you want just a straight black coffee, nothing in it, no milk, no sugar, you can say Kopi Kosong. Kopi and Kosong is Malay for nothing. It's sort of like a mashup between a Chinese dialect called Hokkien and the Malay language. They sort of mix it up. It doesn't really matter what background the person selling you coffee is. Everybody knows this phrase guide for ordering coffee and tea in Singapore. Or don't be afraid to just order in English if you're oh, yeah. not up to the par with the Singapore slang yet. Uh, number eight, standing on the right side of the escalator. Technically, you should stand on the left because on the right side is where people are just kind of like rushing. Everybody has a silent agreement. If you're going to stand on the escalator, stand on the left. And if you're going to walk up the escalator, you walk up on the right. That's right. <laughs> All right, number nine, finding a table after you got your food. Another sort of unspoken rule that Singaporeans have is that when the hawker center is very crowded and you need a place to sit, you can use a tissue packet uh, to reserve, or in Singlish it's called chope, chope. to chope your seat. So if you, if you see, as soon as you see like a packet of tissue paper on something, that means like that someone is already reserving, reserving that territory, mm -hmm. basically. And it's very good to know and not mistake it for, oh, this hawker center is amazing. They even provided me a free tissue packet yeah. while I eat. And then to move it away and to take somebody else's seat, big no-no. And I think like it goes like more than just like a packet of tissue paper. I guess like I've seen like people put like umbrellas or like name cards or like wallets or like laptops or like even like their iPhones. And number 10, calling somebody from the older generation by their first name. Uncles or aunties. Show some respect. Yeah, so if you see like an older generation who typically look like your uncles or your aunties, you want to call them like uncle or auntie. And it's not even limited to your friend's parents. It also applies towards uh, somebody at the hawker center or somebody, your taxi driver. If they are older than you, you can call them uncle and you can call them auntie and it's fine. You would never walk into a house and then call your friend's mom, Hi, Michelle. They were uh, like, get out of my house. <laughs> yeah. I recommend Singapore as a good home base because it's very safe, it's very clean. Everybody speaks English. Yeah, Singapore is such a cool place to visit. As long as you follow all the steps, you're going to have a more pleasant trip to Singapore. And if any other Singaporeans are watching and you have tips for visitors, please put it at the bottom in the comments. Below.